Uh, so first of all, I'm just going to start uh, on behalf of my board colleagues, on behalf of all of the employees of the district, and apologize uh, for what's happened. There is no other place to start than talk to all of you as taxpayers and apologize for it. I will say that, that I feel, frankly, very proud of the board's work, uh, particularly uh, in the past few months, once we began to get a sense for what had happened here and the steps that we took to try and get to the bottom of it. The financial irregularities emerged uh, over the summer in a series of transactions that essentially were part of the fraud, but where the checks basically didn't find the intended party, uh, and that's how the district uh, began to understand something was going wrong. And to the district's, and to the credit of the management in this particular case, Don Kennedy, CFO, one of the two people that we fired last week was the one who actually asked the state to come in and investigate. So he didn't, uh, he didn't understand at that moment in time what he was really sitting on. As the trajectory of the state's investigation became clear, uh, the board took two important steps uh, that, in retrospect, I still feel great about. Um, one is we went to the prosecutor and said, you know, there's something happening here which is just fundamentally wrong. We don't yet know enough to know if there's criminality involved, but you have to look into this. Uh, and uh, Mr. Satterberg, to his credit, cleared his calendar. It's not often when public officials come in saying, we've got a problem, we need your help. He cleared his calendar uh, and he commissioned an investigation immediately. That investigation continues. The school board and the school system no longer has anything to do with it because it is about criminal conduct. Um, and this is a white collar crime, so it will take many months probably to get to the bottom of it. Um, but they have subpoena power, they're working through the bank records, and they will ultimately get to the bottom of it if there's a, uh, a case that they can make. Secondly, the board understood that ultimately what the state auditor was going to come back with was the facts of the case. Who was involved, which organizations were part of it, including Seattle Public Schools. We would understand the facts, likely, but frankly not have a very good impression about who knew what above the situation, if it really was partway down to the organization. That's why we commissioned the private investigation, which commenced about the same time with the prosecutor in early December. Uh, and ultimately, it was based upon the state's investigation and that private investigation, which is, for those of you who read it, resulted in sort of judgments about who should have known what, and if they did know, what should they have done that the board took the action it did. So we've taken a number of actions. We know that the public trust here has been hurt. We've taken a number of actions to start the bad, the difficult work of repair. Obviously, <coughs> additional actions to begin with. Uh, with the superintendent and the CFO, we are splitting the CFO and chief operating officer jobs. We think that was a contributor here. Uh, clearly, we are in instituting a regime with more uh, financial oversight. I'm going to talk about those details. We will be, we will have a stronger internal audit function when we're done. One of the things that has been surprisingly little commented on in the papers or on television or radio is the fact that. The internal audit function in most organizations is the firewall uh, for the board and for the public. That's the organization that's supposed to assess risks and ensure that those risks are being managed by the administration. That function, in this case, it was only occupied by one person, and by the end, he was actually involved in the scheme. So the firewall was breached, um, and that can't happen again. We're clearly going to try and recover the lost funds. We have, we're part of a risk pool and insurance. We'll get some money back, whether we can recover against the individuals, of course. Uh, I'm skeptical about, but we're certainly going to make every effort to do. Uh, and a number of other things that we want to do. We've hired an interim superintendent. Uh, I'm just coming from two hours with her. Tonight is the board uh, did its level setting with her uh, in moving forward. I think you're going to find, first of all, she's a career educator. I still think, despite some folks uh, in the community who believe that the best way to manage a school system is by bringing in business people, I am a business person. I still think it makes the most sense to have a career educator run these organizations. They do understand at some level the cultural and philosophical and practical challenges uh, in the schoolroom. Um, and so I'm happy about that. They do have to have executive experience, uh, which unfortunately sometimes has not been what it needs to be. But I, I feel good about Susan. She's been in Seattle now for about 20 months. I think you're going to find her a breath of fresh air. I think that in many ways, you won't see huge directional differences in terms of big philosophical changes. I think you'll find that her approach to the work, her approach to the community uh, is much different. She's a great listener. Uh, she's open. She's a palms up kind of person. She wants to make a difference. Uh, and I'm hopeful and confident, actually, that she will. 
Um, and so for her, the list starts basically with free exercise. She needs to work, and we need to work to re the public's trust. We have to deal with a very significant uh, cut in our expenses that's part of, unfortunately, the state expense reduction that all of us are going through, and the public school system is an extension of state government. So uh, we have made preliminary decisions on how to lose about $35 million more million out of the school district in terms of cuts that are coming. Uh, we will have to go through a RIF process this spring, probably before the legislature is even done, and we have the final notice of what our cuts will be. That's one of the uh, insanities of the current legal structure we operate in. So number one is restore the public's trust. Number two is deal with these budget cuts. And number three is uh, refocus this conversation on public education.